Welcome to the MSME Radio Network, a division of the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network. The following program broadcast is an original creation by the broadcast entity. Discussion within the following broadcast should be used for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice or consultation. Before considering application of any broadcast content in the following program, please consult your health care provider. If you feel you are having a medical emergency, please contact your local health services for immediate assistance. MSME Media and the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network do not guarantee or warrant the accuracy of information in the broadcast to follow. The Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network provisions broadcast services to program hosts. Information discussed in the broadcast does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or goals of the network and are solely those of the show broadcast hosts. Should you wish to host a broadcast, please visit our website at msmemedia.com and submit a request to become a program host. We thank you for listening to the MSME Radio Network. Enjoy the show. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Thank you guys for tuning in for the third show. Here with me on MSME Radio, my name is Anisha, otherwise known as MS Veteran. Um, glad you guys are tuned in and hope everybody is doing well and feeling well and having a pain-free day or week. Those are very important for us to have. Um, I'm going to talk with you guys a bit on the journey. This one's a little bit of a two-part kind of thing. Um, it's really, there. there's a lot going on um, in the, the media outlets um, with different things that are happening in the world and stuff like that that reflect us or, or have an effect on us here in the United States. What I want to talk to you guys about is stress and MS. The reason why I bring up the fact of the media, one thing that is stressed to me so often by my doctors is to avoid stress as much as possible. Don't get me wrong. I do understand that every day, I know you guys understand that every day life is going to bring us stress. Our kids, you know, a car may break down. Um, there's no telling. There's just things that are stressful that just happen in our day-to-day -day lives. And those things are okay. Deal with them, as we talked about last week. Um, get it behind you. Get it in that rearview mirror. Keep going, looking forward in that windshield, moving right along, okay? But also there's things that you turn on your television and boom, it's just right there in your face. It's every channel, it's every, you turn a channel thinking, okay, I'll just turn it because I don't want to hear this kind of thing. Um, and you turn the channel and it's right there. And the next thing you know, you might, if you're like me, you find yourself watching Paw Patrol. <laughs> um, I watch Paw Patrol and I used to use my granddaughter as an excuse because she was really little at the time, but I love that little theme song to Paw Patrol. It's so cute. But anyway, um, now that you guys know that I'm 21 years old with a bit of shipping and handling and I love Paw Patrol, don't charge it to me, just charge it to my heart. Okay. <laughs> um, but the, the news sometimes can bring you stress and you don't even realize it. With everything that's going on now, I always get, my, my physicians will actually tell me, do not watch the news, stay away from the news, because there were many times that things were going on, especially, you know, during deployments, um, things of that nature when I was back and, you know, dealing with stuff with work and, you know, trying to stay on top of things and all that. And you're watching the news and you're seeing everything that's going on. And before I would know it, my hands were tingly. Um, one time I was so stressed out that I went and looked in the mirror. My, the left side of my face was drooped. And I literally like almost freaked out because I thought I'd had a stroke. It literally, Bell's palsy just set in really fast. And I was like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. So I went to the hospital and 
because of course, if it's a new symptom, it's something that you've never seen happen and you're, you're just not sure, the best thing you can do is go to an ER. That's exactly what I did and had the workup done. Everything was great, had not had a stroke. Guess what? That was a symptom of my MS that reared its head because I had gotten so stressed out. Literally, Bell's palsy just set in. They gave me some medicine and, you know, got myself calm. And maybe a day or two later, my face was right back normal. Okay. So just a suggestion to you guys, because sometimes people don't even realize it, that when you're watching the news and stuff like that with things that are going on, it can bring you stress and you get all worked up and agitated and irritated. You're just stressing your body out to give yourself a pseudo exacerbation. You can even cause yourself a flare or a relapse and we definitely don't want you to do that. So always, always, always remember that you do have an option and that is to when things are very heightened and in a in a stressed out state sometimes you might want to avoid you know things like the news when it's constantly in your face or just you know maybe watch it once and that's enough that you know what's going on but don't just continue to sit there and watch it because it it can bring you some stress and we we definitely don't want that for you um because stress and MS are, they just, they do not work well together. They are not two that go well on a playground, kind of like monkey bars and swings. Mm -mm. Those two don't go together. Um, not at all. <laughs> and I wish I would have used a better example than monkey bars and swings. Hmm. But anyway, um, <laughs> thank goodness. I hope there's only adults listening. But um, do please keep that in mind. And also with stress, I want you guys to know that when you have MS, whenever you become stressed out, the symptoms can just not be there. And then all of a sudden they are there. Okay. You, one minute you're, you're, everything feels fine. And the next minute it doesn't. If you guys are anything like myself, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I kind of do a quick scan of my body as if I were, were a ma machine and I'll kind of, okay, my eyes are open. Yes, I can see. Yep, I'm breathing well. Yep, um, I can move my arms. Yep, I can feel my right hand. Nope, my left hand's a little tingly. I continue to go right on down, even to the tips of my toes. That's something that we have to do because, or that's something I should say that I do. And that way that kind of gives me a little bit of a gauge to go off of every day to tell me, how it was first thing in the morning when I woke up, as opposed to if something changes throughout the day, I then know, uh-oh, okay, so at one o'clock in the afternoon, this started to happen. And then say, when I go to bed that night, if that's still going on that next day by, you know, 24 hours later, so one o'clock that next day, if that thing is still happening, um, I'll usually give it about 48 hours. Then I will call my doctor. I'll call my MS specialist and I'll let them know what's going on and see if, you know, perhaps I need to get down there to them. Um, if it's something that could need to be tweaked. Um, one big thing that I deal with quite a bit, and I'm sure some of you guys can relate, but maybe just doesn't know, don't know what it is, is spasticity. Okay. Um, for me to explain spasticity to someone that is new to MS or someone that doesn't know anything about MS at all, spasticity is one of the most painful things. Like most people think of a Charlie horse, you know, when you're asleep at night or sometimes you move wrong and that Charlie horse hits and it's like, oh my gosh, this is how I am going to die. I didn't imagine it was going to be like this. Well, spasticity is like that on crack. Okay. It's bad. The, the, the level of pain that you feel with it, um, Literally, my, my toes will, will spread out, change shape. Sometimes they'll look like piano keys. Sometimes they'll spread apart like that old show. Um, um, was it called Mork and Mindy, I think? Um, back in the day, that does tell my age. But shh, remember, 21 was shipping and handling, okay? Um, they'll kind of spread out like that nanu nanu thing that um, that guy used to do. They'll do that. 
um, I'll have my big toe still going in one direction and all four other toes are going in a complete different direction. It is so painful. And my kids would be so good with helping me, you know, try to walk it out. And that wasn't always easy. Or my caregiver would help to, you know, rub my foot, you know, think of the the direction that it's actually supposed to go and what it's supposed to do and then think of the exact opposite of what it shouldn't do and then try to rub it that way so painful spasticity is something painful now for some people um spasticity can feel like a um a, a vice like there's a vice there one thing i noticed too with spasticity is that it usually for at about you know 24 maybe even 72 hours i still have pain in that area where i got it and the reason why i'm bringing up spasticity here in this conversation with stress is because that's another th symptom that i will have when i'm very stressed out is that my spasticity will go into overdrive and it is no fun i can just move my foot and there it is it, and it's bad I can, you know, move my hand. There it is. It's really bad. And it is a pain that will honestly make you cry. It is absolutely something terrible. Um, I gotten really stressed out uh, recently um, about some stuff. And the spasticity was so bad that uh, actually I had had an um, EEG done. And um, with that, they discovered that there was kind of like some seizure-like activity, and that is what was causing the spasticity. And this was actually two years ago when I had that test done. And when they figured that out, they then placed me on a medicine called Tegretol, or the generic name for it is carbamazepine. And it's not seizures. Note, I said it's seizure-like. Okay, there's a difference there. And when I was placed on carbamazepine, and it's a, it's a chewable and tastes like sweet tarts, depending on the manufacturer, by the way. <laughs> but um, I started off on, you know, 10 milligrams of that. And um, it was calming it down, but not so much. And um, now I'm up to, I think, um, 40 uh, milligrams of it because you do have wiggle room with that medication. And it works very well with getting spasticity under control. And just recently I was when I went up to 40 because um, the spasticity started again. So that let us know that there was a breakthrough um, with the medication to where my body was no longer responding to the 30 milligram dose that I was on. So um, my doctors decided to raise it. And thank goodness I am finally you know leveling out and not dealing with so much spasticity and i'm also keeping myself away from stress because that is so important don't get me wrong there's stress every day there's stress that we have to deal with in everyday life and it's going to happen but again kind of ping-ponging off of what we talked about last week just get it behind you get it in that rearview mirror and then keep going because the more you hang on to it the worse that it is and, you know, sometimes there's situations with people um, that will happen and it'll get you upset. And, you know, don't hang on to anger too long because literally when you hang on to that anger it's with us having MS, it just makes it so much worse for you. And I just tell myself it's honestly not worth it because that's almost like a, a poison that I'm expecting for them to feel, but I'm the one who's drinking it and it's just hurting me because I'm the one that's hurting, you know? physically um, because emotionally I'm hurting and it's just aggravating my MS symptoms. So um, with everything that's going on in the media, I would like for you guys to kind of take that into consideration that, like I said, by all means, stay up to date in what's going on. But I highly recommend and suggest that you guys don't, you know, maybe sit and continue to watch it, watch it, watch it, because things like that can aggravate um, your symptoms, especially if you carry the stress from it and you're just taking it in 24 hours, you know, a day or even sometimes two hours of it is just more than we can honestly handle. Um, but when you're new to MS or even sometimes you can have it for a, a long time, but when someone never really explains things like this to you, you just honestly don't know 
But then once you say, hey, you know what? That crazy girl, that MS veteran, she has suggested maybe, you know, cutting back and not watching the news, you know, as often. Let me see what that's going to do for me. And honestly, look me up on Facebook. Um, again, Anisha Hankins is actually my name. And um, let me know, you know, let me know if it if it makes a difference for you, because honestly, I, I think that it will, because it was something that um, honestly helped me out a, a whole lot, a whole lot. Um, just know, again, life brings about stress. This diagnosis alone brings about stress, but that's OK. That is OK. Just learn how to deal with it and keep on moving forward. Um. Another um, journey tip that I want to give to you guys today is um, when you are going and you're having MRIs done of, of course, your brain, um, your cervical, um, cervical neck and thoracic spine, um, many people, you know, will ask the question, well, I've had one done of my brain, you know, I haven't had one done of my neck or my spine yet, and, you know, I don't know what we're waiting on. Again, I can, one of the best things that I can say to someone is to trust the process, okay? Trust the process. And also, given that, there's just a little bit of work I got to ask of you guys to do with that process. And that is, um, whenever you have MRIs and things like that done, make sure that you ask them to give you a copy of the MRI report so that you have for your own records and get yourself some sort of filing system set up, you know, where you have maybe, you know, an accordion folder and break it up to, you know, January to December in 2017. And then all of these notes, even changes to your medicine, things with your journals. When you have your MRIs, you're going to stick it in the uh, accordion folder, file it away into what month that it was done. And the reason why I say that to you guys is just in case anything ever comes up. And let's say for those of you people that are working now, and it comes down to a point that you are no longer able to work and you need all this stuff and let's say something happened and your insurance changed because let's face it, it's happening to a lot of people. Their insurance is changing like crazy and you're going to need copies of that stuff. Guess what? You'll already have it and you'll have a great filing system there so that whatever's needed, you have it on hand. You'll be able to get to it. You'll be able to easily access it because sometimes doctor's offices, they shut down. Then you have the issue of, okay, what do I do now? Um, I'm not sure where to go or how to get these records. So if you're asking for copies of things and you're filing them away in your own filing system that you set up for yourself and make sure that your caregivers know that you're doing it as well, um, that way you'll have access to everything because you're going to have it right there with you. And trust me, I know how a lot of places are like, oh, you know, everything that we have now, we have it in the computer. Well, guess what? I see a printer right over there. So go ahead and hit control P or alt P or whatever it is and go ahead and print that out for your girl because I need a copy of it. Okay. <laughs> just, just make sure you, you tell them and you get copies of your stuff because it is your information and you are entitled to have a copy of it. Um, also, one thing that you can do too is perhaps um, ask your doctor's office to give you an actual uh, medical folder, plain, blank. And then that way, as you're getting stuff, you're going to um, start at the, the bottom and then, you know, work your way up. You know, your first piece of paper that you get correspondence, it goes on the bottom. And then as you're getting things, just keep adding to the top of that. So that way you stay current. OK, so anytime somebody would need to look at what records you have, then you just if you want to do it with that route, whenever you uh, they open your records that you have, whenever they open what's at the top is most current, then going all the way when they get to the back, that's going to be, you know, from the beginning. OK. Um, that's something that's very important, I feel, for people to make sure that they do is to um, get a copy of their records and MRI reports and, um, again, those journals. Um, just, just make sure that you have that stuff because that's very important to have. Um, also, um, another thing, um, last week I talked with you guys about time management. 
Um, another thing that I'll talk to you guys about is this is pretty funny. Um, when I when I went to this this program um, with this doctor that I talk about that I absolutely love this guy. His his mind is brilliant. And um, going through that program, it's like <clears throat> I was sitting there thinking, why are we doing this stuff? Like you want me to go outside and blow bubbles? Like I'm old. I don't want to go blow bubbles. What's this gonna do? Let me tell y'all something. That was the most fun I had had in years sitting blowing bubbles because it's like I got in touch with my inner child. It was amazing. Like it was the greatest thing ever to, you know, sit and blow bubbles. Um, coloring books, they're so much fun and they have all these great adult coloring books now. Um, guys, that's a great way to unwind during the day or after, you know, even if something's going on during the day, you kind of need to escape. Grab one of those coloring books. Get you one of those adult coloring books and, you know, just do a little bit of coloring or go outside or, hey, if the bubbles are safe inside. Blow a few bubbles. Get in touch with your inner child. Trust me, it is a way that takes really no thinking. It is just something that you can do to take your mind off of things and it honestly helps out so so much it it really does and i i, I fought this man um not physically okay but i was just kind of going against the grain because i thought why are we doing this but real quick i was like oh my gosh i get it i absolutely get it and it was so great so um, that's that's a piece of advice I'd like to you know give you guys as well. Um, it's it's a lot of fun and for any of you guys that have kids and um, you know they're playing and you know all that it's something you can do with them is just go outside and you know blow some bubbles and just have a good time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that um, and and trust me you'll find yourself smiling and laughing before you know it. Okay, um, I know that. This disease is so, so hard. I, I know that it is. And any, living with any disease, not just MS, it could be anything from diabetes to arthritis to um, to fibromyalgia, you, you, lupus, um, Sjogren's syndrome, living with any disease, it's hard to do because that means that you are going to have to bring about a change to your life in order to live with it. But does that mean that you can do it? Heck, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I want you guys to know to have faith in yourself, believe in yourself, and know that no matter what, you're not going to let whatever this is, whatever, whatever disease that it is that a person may be dealing with, because I have some, you know, listeners that, you know, don't have MS and I appreciate you guys, um, every last one of you. And for everyone who does have MS, you know, um, just know that you can do this. I know that living with MS and also living with other diseases, you know what? We are so hard on ourselves that people don't understand that they don't need to be hard on us because we are honestly our own worst critics because we look at how we used to be before and everything that we used to be before this happened to where we are now and we see how much that it took, how much that, you know, we're just different but you know what? I honestly take a look at this and I say, you know what? This person A, person B, person C. Hmm. When I first heard that theory, I was like, what? I'm a type A personality. Like, I don't know who B and C are. I've never met them in my life. <laughs> and I doubt that I ever will. <laughs> but as I went through the process, guess what? I met person B of myself and I also met person C, which is who I am today. And don't get me wrong, person C still has parts of person A 
my type A personality. There's part B. There's things that I know that I simply just cannot do and I accept it. And person C is me who is living with MS and Sjogren's and all these other diagnoses that I have and all these things that are because I have this disorder, that disorder, and another disorder, all the things that just come along with it. And note, this is a process, but you know what? You guys can get to this too. You can get to it too. If you spend too much time trying to hold on to person A and saying, this is me, this is me, this is me, and I'm not, I can't, I, I just, I cannot accept this. I cannot do this. I'm telling you right now that you can because there is nothing wrong with person C because who person C is, is the you. It is still you. It's just you that's living with MS or whatever it is that you may have. That's all that it is. And I also want to add as well that we just happen to know what's wrong with us. We just happen to know it. There's many people out there that, God bless them, I, I, I pray for this entire world. There's many people out there that they don't know what's wrong with them. They have no idea because they can't afford insurance or whatever the case may be. And they're just trying to make it through. And, you know, I, I pray for them as well. And it, it, just know that you can do it. Don't be so hard on yourself. Please don't. I see it so, so much. Please don't. And for loved ones, caregivers, you know, whatever, you know, just understand that that process that people are going through, it's tough because you're honestly just raw taking a look at yourself excuse me in the mirror knowing that parts of who you were you have to do you really have to let them go but you know what it's okay it is okay because person c is just going to be stronger person c is going to say you know what I'm in this for some reason and I'm going to kick MS in the ass or whatever else it is that they are living with. And that's where I want to see each and every one of you get to. And pardon my French, if you want me to say derriere, derriere, if you want me to say but, there's but. <laughs> um, again, excuse me for the bad word, but it's just important that you know that I want to see you guys get to where you know that you can do this. You can beat it. You can do what you have to do to be a stronger you for yourself and for your family. Again, I thank y'all for listening in this week and hope to see you guys next week and that y'all will listen in. Again, I want to thank MSME Radio for this amazing opportunity here. And I'm sending out much love to each and every one of you. Y'all have a blessed week. Bye-bye.